Hey guys, so many of you guys have left comments on past videos that you want to see a little more accessory testing. So just recently on the fly, we came up with this idea to use our circular saw head to head rig that we just finished testing, saws on, to test some seven and a quarter inch framing blades. Saw blades, they come in a variety of designs, but primarily it, it revolves around the number of teeth, right? And blades with more teeth are gonna give you a smoother cut, whereas blades with less teeth are gonna remove material faster. We decided for this test, we just do a quick little sampling test. We tested seven framing blades in the 10 to $12 range, the economy range, framing blades. And we wanted to see how they held up under extreme cutting conditions. Now a standard seven and a quarter inch framing blade has 24 teeth and it's effective for rough carpentry where speed is a priority over ultra smooth cutting. And the blades we looked at, we looked at the Crescent Nail Slicer, DeWalt's blade, Diablo's framing blade, the old Irwin Marathon that's been around since the 90s or earlier, Makita Ultra Thin Kerf, Milwaukee's framing blade, and the Spider Tarantula framing blade. So we set up this performance test for the blades and the speed at which a circular saw can cut through a particular material, it's a factor of blade shape, which is width and diameter, tooth count, tooth shape, stuff like that, blade rotational speed, and clearly horizontal force applied. So we looked at all of those things and we wanted to be fair to the blades, but we wanted to accelerate the wear and tear stress on these blades. So we decided, or designed a brutal eight foot nail embedded lumber rip cut, three cuts, per blade were performed, three new blades, three cuts, and the time was averaged. We used three new batteries for each cut, three new blades, and three cuts averaged the time. For cutting material, we used a eight foot two by 10 KD with 16 penny nail embedded nails, every inch. The material was pre-drilled along the center axis to prevent or reduce splitting. We installed the nails by hand, and it resulted in 94 nails over an eight foot board. So as far as controlling the circular saw variables, for this test, we chose to use the winner of the head-to-head -head test, which is the DeWalt FlexVolt, the 5781 saw. And we wanted to use a cordless saw, not a corded saw for this test, because that's what we use out in the field, cordless saws. So for every test, we used a fully charged ambient temperature battery, FlexVolt battery for the DeWalt saw. After each test, the saw was allowed to rest, and we additionally cooled the saw down with compressed air through the vent slots. We did not experience any shutdowns, electronic or battery overloads, or anything negative on the saw. Now we controlled cutting variables. To test the longevity and cutting power of these saw blades, the crew wanted or needed to basically control those cutting variables. So we achieved this by using the same circular saw, using the same cut board for each saw blade and then swapping them as we needed it for the next tests. We used a drop weight pulley system, a low friction sl saw sled rig, and it was done to prov uh, provide repeatable, consistent force cuts. For our cutting sled, we used that Craig AccuCut track system, and we secured it to our test rig with the eight foot lumber indexed underneath. The AccuCut sled was pulled by a line and a series of low friction pulleys attached to an 11 pound weight, which provided us a consistent 11 pound horizontal force pull through the saw cut. Now, after each cut, the sled and track were cleared of sawdust and metal debris with magnet and, and vacuums, and before each first run of each saw blade, the test was lubricated with silicone spray. The track and the uh, sled were lubricated. Um, we also controlled timing variables with electromechanical micro switches that were fixed at the front, the start, and the end of the cutting rig. Time would automatically start when the saw began moving. Time would stop when the saw finished the wood cut. If a blade was unable to complete a full cut or the blade was deteriorated to the point where it was smoking or just spinning and not moving, or there was a safety concern, um, we stopped the cut, the timer was manually stopped, length of cut recorded, and we went back to a video and, and, and got the time. Now, for nail cut results, we chose to use nails cut as our winner versus time cut as a scoring variable. Now, as a remodeling contractor, I'd much rather have a blade that cuts longer, cuts more, than cuts faster and wears out soon. Uh, but I'm really curious what you think. It's not what I think, what do you guys think? Leave a comment. You want to cut more nails or you want it to cut faster? The winner of this test was the Diablo Framing Blade, which cut 94 nails in 34 seconds. It was the only saw to complete a full rip cut to complete the test and clearly had a little bit more life we thought to keep going additional material. Second place went to the Crescent Nail Slicer, 
That kind of total of 91 nails in 54 seconds before the blade was unable to continue cutting. Uh, third place, that went uh, to a tie. That was between DeWalt and Milwaukee. DeWalt had 87 nails in 67 seconds. Milwaukee had 87 nails in 80 seconds. DeWalt was faster. The spider tarantula came in one nail short, fourth place with 86 nails in 32 seconds. It cut almost as fast as Diablo, but the cutting capacity diminished quickly and the saw stopped cutting. I do want to note that many of these saw blades, after we stop the test and, and uh, the time, we could manually muscle them through the test and cut additional nails, oftentimes completing them with more pushing force, but we didn't record that because that's not how we usually cut with a saw. Um, to conclude, this test had some impressive, interesting results for us. Prove to us that a $10 to $12 framing blade can be successfully deployed and be productive in a framing, and more importantly, even a remodeling environment where you're cutting nail embedded wood all the time. So, what's more important to you? Are you more interested in a framing blade that is faster? but wears out sooner? Or do you want a blade that has longevity that can cut through more nails and things and it's gonna last a little bit longer, but maybe not as quite as fast? I'd really like to know what you guys think, so please comment below. You already know what I think, so let me know what you think. Also, let me know if you'd like to see more type of accessory testing and give me some ideas. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. We really could use your support. When you click that notification icon, the bell, it lets you know when you um, let you know when we publish a video, but it also helps our rankings in YouTube, which we we could use the support. So, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm Rob Robillard, and we'll see you at the next video. Take care.